Good morning, YouTube, Facebook. This is Jay Trekker 717 I am back. <laughs> All right. Uh, basically, uh, I am going to be starting a weekly uh, Trekker channel. It's going to be uh, Trekker 717 Broadcasting. Uh, I'm going to try to do this on a weekly basis. Like I said, I'm back. Um, again, uh, the trucking industry is changing so much. And, um, you know, I thought it would be a, 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 a detriment to leave a void in, in the trucking broadcast. So I'm back here uh, trying to uh, basically give uh, truckers a knowledge and, uh, you know, do something I love doing. And uh, so we are going to get to it. Uh, what are we going to be talking about? Um, we are going to be talking about trucking news, new technology, uh, the changes in the regulation in trucking, uh, things that trucking needs like trucking unions, uh, different things that uh, will help truckers because I, you know, being a former trucker, I'm still a trucker, runs, runs red in my blood. But uh, one of the things I realized after, while you're out there, you know, you're kind of isolated from uh, the rest of the world. And uh, I wanted to give it an avenue for you to actually learn different things. Uh, there's so many changes going on in the trucking industry right now. So I wanted to uh, add to the broadcast. And I know you missed me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trucker 717 is always a party in 717. All right, so we're going to talk about it today. I'm going to get started uh, with our uh, weekly broadcast. And again, some of the things that we're going to also be doing is bringing on uh, different, uh, different hosts. Uh, I'm going to try to get a couple uh, different hosts, some familiar names that you're probably familiar with. Uh, to get onto the podcast uh, to kind of give this a, a good boost. All right. Um, again, you will probably hear me say this a lot. Uh, if you uh, like this uh, podcast, please like and subscribe. Uh, by doing that, you will help this broadcast to continue to strive <clears throat> and continue on. Uh, we definitely need you to like and subscribe. All right. Here we go. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, um, I like to call it the last mile of trucking. Um, basically, um, you know, I spent a year as an OTR, over the road truck driver. Uh, that's the meeting. <laughs> that's a serious big deal there. The, the OTR <laughs> from, you know, from California to New York. So basically, uh, I was an OTR. Uh, last mile trekking is basically uh, a good friend of mine was uh, working for uh, a company that you're familiar with, Snyder National. And uh, basically, he worked on a uh, Walmart account, a uh, dedicated Walmart account. And I would consider that part last mile of trekking because basically what he did was he took uh, the freight from the distribution center in Gordon, Virginia, and took it to the different Walmarts in this area, uh, you know, in the Virginia area. So that is considered the last mile of trucking. Uh, another uh, might be considered the last mile of trucking is um, trucking that uh, where you're moving uh, containers and stuff from rail yards from different places. Um, and usually it's done with a day cab. A lot of people just use a regular uh, sleeper because, you know, if you rest, you can always take a nap. But uh, a day cab would do, but uh, that was considered the last mile of trucking. Now, um, one of the things I, I was talking about is electronic trucking. I was talking about little hydrofuel trucking. Uh, Nicola One was kind of the first one I knew that uh, kind of came out with that alternative fuel. Um, what you're going to see a lot of times is the freight is changing. It's it's kind of settling out. They they say between a dollar fifty and four dollars an hour is what you can expect from uh, you know mileage from trucking, and it's probably settling out around two dollars. 
but you're going to see that pretty much stable. And one of the reasons why you're probably going to see that stable is because electronic trucking. Um, you're going to be able to basically uh, drive a truck and not pay for fuel. That is the number one expense in trucking is fuel. Uh, it's something that uh, trucking has been trying to uh, deal with for a long time, but that's your number one cost in fueling if you haven't noticed it by now. And fuel is going to be your number one cost. Uh, so uh, uh, what they're doing with this electronic trucking, the higher fuel, the alternative fuel, they even got gas trucks. Uh, what they're doing is they're realizing that if they can get out of fuel costs or get fuel costs under control, uh, they can basically uh, stabilize that uh, the rate. So uh, I say this because a lot of people are still using diesel fuel for trucking. And what you're going to find out is a lot of the bigger companies are going to be using alternative fuel. So now you're going to be competing with somebody where you're paying, uh, you know, a thousand dollars a week in fuel costs and they're paying maybe a hundred or maybe zero. <laughs> so that's going to be tough. And that's why you're going to see a lot of the, the rates for trucking stabilize at uh, probably around two dollars or somewhere around that per mile. Uh, don't be surprised because again, a lot of uh, the bigger companies are buying these electronic trucks and they realize that it's going to be a savings and they're going to be able to compete more and uh, I kind of you know wanted to put that out because you know a lot of uh, new people are getting into the business of trucking don't realize that they're, you're competing with someone who's not paying for fuel and uh, that's 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 very important so uh, let's talk about it um, like I said, Nikola One was the first one I knew that came out with. Tesla is into trucking. Uh, Tesla um, Tesla has some problems with production. Tesla has some problems with putting out what they say they're going to put out. And, uh, and some of the, the things I think I've seen with Tesla, the trucks are kind of a little on the uh, spaceship type <laughs> trucks. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm not so confident in Tesla as I am. But one of the things I've noticed, you know, um, I've done Freightliners, Volvos, um, you know, I've done, drove almost uh, all types of trucks, uh, but uh, Freightliner was one of my first trucks. Um, I kind of liked the Freightliner, I did Volvo, just personal purpose. Um, drove an automatic truck. Uh, I've drove stick shifts, but uh, oh, automatic, because my, my, my thing Frank. I love that automatic. <laughs> But uh, uh, Freightliner is coming out with an electric truck. Now that's going to be uh, what I call a game changer because uh, everybody knows Freightliner. Every, you know, it's, it's a well-known trucking uh, industry. So uh, let's talk about the Freightliner e-mobility, the new truck out there. All right, e-mobility. Uh, this kind of looks like what the... Uh, uh, truck looks like uh, again the standard Freightliner look um, and then you'll see to the side over here this truck um, this one right here is basically um, it's also called your last line of truck and this is the day cab this is the day cab that you will see in trucking so they have kind of two models they're called emt e-mobility a freight line of truck it's all electric no fuel guys all electric okay let's let's talk about it again this is the em e-mobility freight liner that they're talking about uh em2 106 um again all electric truck um it's going to be out in 2021 um it may even possibly be out later this year but they're looking at uh 2021 as this truck coming out so it is it is it is coming soon so um and this is another picture of it again the range for this truck is 250 miles now um 
it has what you call a charge where you can charge it in an hour and a half. So, and at an hour and a half, it will uh, produce 80%. So basically you can go another 200 miles with this. So let's say that last mile of trucking in Gordon, uh, Virginia, driving here to Norfolk, um, I don't think, I think it's probably like 90 miles. I'm not sure how, what the range is from Gordon to uh, uh, Norfolk. Uh, it's been a while. But um, so you leave the, let's say you leave the Walmart distribution center in Gordon, Virginia, and you make your stops here in Norfolk and the different areas. And uh, you can go up to, like I said, 250 miles before you have to stop. Now, let's say you make your last stop in Norfolk and you charge up. You have another 200 miles to make it back to your destination. Now, again, I'm not sure on the mileage from Norfolk to Gordon's, Virginia. But even if you could not make it all the way there, you could always stop on the way back charge again and stop on like a truck stop somewhere uh charge for you know a good hour and a half and you're home the nice thing about it is that time is really not a, a factor because you're not paying for fuel so they can afford to spend a little longer uh getting you from and to the destination because again fuel cost is zero uh, of course, you're going to pay for electricity, and, and that has to be figured in, in a complication, but it's not as uh, it's not going to be nearly expensive as diesel fuel at five miles per gallon. Okay, and this is just basically the same type of truck. It goes 230 miles, but this is just a day cab. That, that's the difference. Now, day cabs, you're going to be using those coming from, uh, I know in Norfolk, we have like a lot of rail yards where they come in through uh, ships and uh, actually trains. They bring the actual containers in ships and trains. And then what they have is this uh, day cab will pick up, go out to the rail yard or and the shipping port, and they will pick up the container and take it to the distribution center. Where the distribution center will then uh, get it to its final destination. So that's again another uh, last mile of trucking. Uh, it gives a little bit of information. All right. So again, uh, we see the two different types of truck in this last mile of trucking. Um, it gives a little bit more detail into it. Now, one of the things it talks about, I remember uh, I was uh, on the kick of autonomous trucking. Uh, that, that's another thing I wanted to talk about uh, as far as new technology. Uh, but autonomous trucking is pretty much, uh, it's not so close as what we think it is. And that's what they're kind of talking about here in the simple fact that uh, we may not see autonomous trucking for a while. There's some kinks and stuff that they need to work out. Now, I've always said that autonomous trucking is not going to replace a truck driver. It's just going to be an extension, to my understanding, of cruise control. You're going to have cruise control, and you're going to have autonomous control, where you can basically just take your hands off the wheel. And I know I've driven uh, going to uh, California, and there's some places in California where you get on that road, and you can turn on autonomous trucking and drive for a good hour or so and probably not even have any problems. That's going to be the benefit of that. Um, of course, you're going <laughs> to uh, you're gonna have to stay in your seat. You can't go to sleep. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be something that's going to be uh, a part of uh, trucking. All right, so I wanted to show you this video. Uh, this video clip here and uh, basically this is the electric autonomous truck Jason Morgan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.
Okay. Have you driven a Cascadia before? Not an electric one. Okay. But you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know yeah, the controls. Right. Okay. Yep, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, let me know if you have any questions then. I will. Uh, well, yeah. So it's on, it's running. It's on, it's running. Okay. okay. Um, so you just press on the brake and go into drive. Okay. Just like on a GT12. Okay. And uh, of course, you release the air brakes. Okay. The only thing we ask is you honk the horn to yeah. let people know. To, cl to clear, the, yeah. clear the road here. We don't want your colleagues to bring them over. We'll put a bit of a damper on the day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're good, right? Yep. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a little disconcerting, you don't, I mean, with the AMTs, you didn't feel, the, well, you still felt the weight, right? But you didn't, um, still kind of felt like a pickup truck a little bit. Mm -hmm. This, you don't even really feel the weight being pulled, mm -hmm. you know, to get going. You just kind of go, huh? Yeah. That's wild. And it's, uh, it's fully loaded. Okay. Uh, fully loaded trailers. It's all the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, the first thing you notice in an electric truck, I think, besides it being quiet, are all the other noises around you. Like right. The cabinet is rattling. Right. Can you hear me mouth breathing? <laughs> <laughs> so they mentioned that there's... Door open. I think the sensor is just uh, broken. Okay. It's, it's it's just it's hit okay. okay there. Just or touch it? Or hit okay on the steering wheel. Oh, okay. Go away. Okay. I like that dash too. The sound is. It's a new sound for me. Is it? Maybe my door's not closed all the way? It's a prototype truck. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's still very cool. Um, so they said there's like two gear or uh, drive settings, right? There's direct drive, and then they have a couple other ones here um, for, the, for the axles. These are uh, E-axles, so okay. the motors so are integrated inside the axles. Oh, okay. Uh, on the EM2, uh, one of them has, a, actually both of them have a propeller prop shaft driven. Motor. Right. So it's a central electric motor okay. that drives a prop shaft similar to a diesel, and it spins the regular axles. Okay. The same axles you have today. I see. A little bit of a different design. This is a little more efficient because you no longer have the drive line and the efficiency right. losses there. Um, motors are integrated into the axle. Right. And that's the intent for our series production as well as to have an integrated axle. How many of these prototypes exist? Um, so this is our first prototype. Okay. Uh, and we're right now building, we're, I would say, 80% done with our first two innovation fleet Cascadias. Okay. Uh, you've probably heard a little bit about the innovation fleet. Yep. So 20 e Cascadias and 10 M2s so that we're giving to Penske and NFI. Okay. Uh, some of our major customers to to learn about electric trucks and kind of like a like a learning opportunity for us and learning opportunity for them. Right. And use it in real world application. And NFI is only getting e Cascadias, right? They're only getting yeah. Cascadias. Yeah. Penske gets 10 M2s or 10 e M2s and 10 M2s. Yeah, right. that's right. Okay. Very cool. Man, yeah. this is deceiving the speed even of it. It doesn't feel. Yeah. It feels completely different. Yeah, um, our intended application is uh, pickup and delivery and uh, portrayage right. and things like that. Anything that has a dedicated route right. um, that day cap would usually do, it's, we would be perfect for an electric truck. Of course, range is, is always the big question. Um, and payload, so we want to make sure we balance the two. So we, we, we talk to our customers and, and try to figure out what is your range, how much payload do you need, and you can size your battery pack appropriately. Right. You can just stop here. Okay. And then we will. I'm going to move the truck out. Oh, okay. So that you guys can get some pictures. Awesome. In better light. Good. Yeah. That's it. All right. Very good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. That was a nice little video. Um, uh, and oh my gosh, how quiet that truck was as it was taking off. 
and uh, very, very smooth riding. Again, that's the um, Freightliner E Cascadia uh, called E Mobility and an e, EM 102, I think it was. Now, um, I did look up again, my friend worked at the uh, had a uh, with the Snyder National. Snyder National is what I used to call it. Uh, I worked for them as well, one of my first trucking companies I worked for. But he worked for Snyder National. He worked on the Walmart account and uh, up in Gordonsville. He actually lived up in Gordonsville, so it was perfect for him. Uh, but he used to drive here and he would end up spending the night over here in Norfolk. So that really wasn't an issue with getting back to the center when he spent the night over so he could literally uh and i looked up the mileage it's 150 miles 158 miles so he could drive here dropped his loads uh you know he has 250 miles and spend the night uh charge his truck up and drive back uh, no gas no fuel that would be premium that would be excellent uh another thing too is that um let's suppose and this is something that we talked about all the time is usually when he got here to Norfolk, uh, um, he would end up waiting quite a long period of time to get unloaded. Uh, again, you know, once you uh, stop at that shipper, uh, you want to go ahead and charge up your truck um, while you're sitting there waiting. Uh, and then, then, you know, again, there you are. You, you're already pretty loaded back up with your electricity and you can just uh, head on back to, uh, your distribution center. So we can see how this is going to change the trucking industry, especially with the last mile trucking. Uh, and uh, I could even see this, you know, when you think about it, uh, up to like four or 500 miles. And uh, there's quite a few places that uh, you make those, uh, you know, as an OTO dri OTR driver, uh, we only drove 600 miles a day anyway, you know, anywhere from 400 to 600 miles a day anyway. So, uh, you know, even in that situation, even if you took uh, a, a drive uh, 200 miles, stopped for an hour and a half, took a break, you know, you got your 30 minute break, you know, you take a stop for an hour and a half and then drive the other 200 miles to get to your destination, um, I could easily see this as an OTR dr uh, truck. E trucks as those, uh, especially if it has a sleeper in it. Yeah, easily regional routes, four hundred miles, easily. So again, uh, this is Jay, trucker seven one seven, and there's always a party in seven one seven. This is my first broadcast. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I will see you later. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace, somebody.